Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Paco Marotti, and here at the Association of the United States Army's annual conference and trade show in Washington, D.C., the number one gathering of U.S. Army leaders from around the world. Our coverage here is sponsored by General Motors Defense, Bell, L3 Harris and Leonardo DRS, and we're here at the Ultra Electronics uh, stand to talk to uh, Tony White, uh, the Chief Technology Officer of Ultra uh, Electronics on the land systems uh, side of things. And I am not wearing uh, some odd crown, but last year, for all of you who were paying attention, we interviewed Tony about his pioneering work at mastering brain waves uh, and brain control uh, to be able to direct complex military systems in the future. And over the past year, you've actually had some massive breakthroughs. Sure, we, uh, we're using some off-the-shelf gaming technology. We have a product called Ultralinks, which connects all of the wearable peripherals that a soldier might carry. And we're looking at different ways that we might be able to control those devices. So last year, we took some gaming technology, what you're wearing on your head, and integrated it through Ultralinks to provide control of those devices. So I can now control radios and change the volume on the radio or change channels by thought, I can take a photograph by thought, turn a flashlight on and off by thought, and by the end of the year we'll be flying a drone by thought, or using a headset that you integrate into the helmet. That's um, absolutely incredible, and at the time, uh, I, I just thought it was incredible technology. So this is the headset, this is the tiara, if you will. So talk to us about what this does, and how it does what it does, and then how do you use it, because thinking to do something is easier than, you know what I mean? So there is a trick to actually how you have to think in order to be able to do this. So, so walk sure. us through how this magic works, Tony. Sure. Okay, well we measure alpha, beta, theta, and gamma waves, and they're no neurological uh, signatures that the brain creates. Uh, the electrical uh, monitoring of those is not new technology. You would have seen on films and TV people wearing big wiring harnesses for connected up to big data recorders that are measuring those brain waves. The company that makes this headset, is it's, it's a commercial headset, uh, is doing that monitoring uh, and has rationalized that for uh, gaming purposes. And we're taking that technology and looking at how we exploit that through Ultralinks to control military devices. When it comes to thinking, thinking those thoughts, what we do is we train you to have um, uh, signatures. So let's imagine we want to turn the volume up or down. So we might think of that as rotating a volume knob left and right or clockwise and counterclockwise. So we have you think those thoughts. So think clockwise, think counterclockwise. I had a guy doing this and he used to parachute and he said, think clockwise is the same kind of thought I have when I rotate out of the aircraft. So it's an individual's thoughts and we train that person to have those thoughts repetitively and then map those thought signatures through Ultralinks to the thing we're trying to control. So, so it's an individual's uh, training, that's what we do. So each individual's thought will be different, but what we do is look at how we can do the, those thoughts repeatedly. Um, and if you suddenly start daydreaming, I mean, things could go horribly badly. I mean, right, sure. so, so talk to us about what happens if all of a sudden, you know, somebody starts thinking, well, I'm hungry, I'd like a sandwich, and then all of a sudden the UAV plunges out of the sky and, you know, crashes into Westminster Abbey or something. So, so tell us exactly how this actually would work. Okay, so the, so the first thing is most drones aren't piloted, they're commanded. So there's an autopilot on the drone which keeps them in the air. Right. So if you stop thinking, the drone's not gonna fall out the sky. So I, I knew that was a bad example to have used, but anyway. <laughs> okay, so, so uh, but, but we do get asked, you know, because people think it, you know, so, so I'm flying a drone and someone walks by and I'm gonna get distracted or I'm thinking about tomorrow's task, not today. So one of the things we're working with, we're working with a, a, a neuro practitioner and what she teaches are some clever techniques to keep you on task. So to keep those thoughts going uh, and make, the, make it uh, background. So uh, remember when you learned to drive, it's a very alien thing and, and uh, now you get in your car and you drive not even without thinking about it, you're thinking about other things. And all the things you're doing about driving all happen without you really thinking about them and that's where we think this will go. So what we think is that the, the training that we implement will become second nature over time such that those distractions will be accommodated. Does, does that make sense? Yeah, no, no, that uh, that makes complete sense, and uh, I'm glad that my rather ill thought through uh, idea brought it uh, brought it to uh, uh, brought you to a, a better place in terms of uh, the the answer. Um, 
So tell us how you put that interface then into the systems, because you're holding this tree-like gadget in your hand for uh, a, a reason, and I believe uh, this is part of the whole Lynx architecture that you guys have, the Ultra Lynx architecture that you have. Yep, so this is Ultra Lynx, this is our smart hub. Um, what that allows us to do is uh, keep the uh, connectivity between devices uh, through a box that we then uh, bring in uh, sensors and devices we can control them with. So we would connect the radio, the GPS, anything the soldier carries through Ultralinks. And then we can uh, command all those devices through whatever we like. So we can connect a joystick to this, or a gesture control, or conventional control buttons, or the thought controller. Uh, so thought control is just another input we, we place into this uh, and map whatever the thought controller can do through links to the devices we've got connected. So if you, if you don't have a drone, we can connect a camera, you can control the camera by thought. Uh, if you don't have a camera and you don't have a drone, but you've got a computer image with a menu, you can control the menu by thought. So any of the things that are connected to links can be controlled by the thought control device. And um, how long before this is fully operationalized in a military con uh, context? Okay, so uh, we, we've been working on this uh, piece of work for uh, the military piece for the last two years under an, uh, an IRAD project. Um, I went live um, in the middle of this year at a conference and said, oh, we're doing this, please tell me if I'm crazy. The phone hasn't stopped ringing in terms of people saying this is really interesting, so that's good. Um, Gartner, the, uh, the research organization, say that the general technology is called brain-computer interfacing, and brain-computer interfacing is 10 years away from being commonly available. So this is very much in concept at the moment, so pre proof of concept for us, we're testing the water to see if I'm crazy. Realistically, I'll be flying a drone by the end of the year for development purposes, we're not going to feel, see it in the field for probably another five years, I would think. Um, right, but if you if you think about it, um, and, it, and the interview was actually a little bit longer than that ago. So I'm I'm uh, I mean, it, it, may, it was two, if not three years ago, when we first did um, had this conversation. But if you think about it, it it is completely game changing on every single axis, whether it's for vehicle control, whether it's for systems control, whether it's for actually complex battle management, right? Because you're going to be able to respond faster than, for example, manipulating. Right, I mean, so what's the clear advantage, right? Can you manipulate, if I look at my son controlling a game controller or a keyboard, it is stupefyingly rapid in, in terms of his uh, skill level to do this. Full disclosure, my son is, uh, you know, an absolute A athlete in university, uh, but he's also a very, very good, uh, good, a good gamer. So, you know, what are the advantages of this uh, at the end of the day? Uh, if you think about what a soldier does, he's, he's, he's a war fighter and his tool for war, war fighting is his weapon. Taking his hands off his weapon to do anything makes him susceptible to attack, susceptible to, to damage. So keeping his hands on weapon is probably the, the thing we're trying to address the most. So having my hands on the weapon but still being able to control things remotely by thought is actually the, the number one benefit. That, that's what we're doing. I don't have to take my hands off what I'm meant to be doing to control those other devices. Um, yeah, that would be really, really good for those of us who actually spend a lot of time typing uh, and writing uh, you know, hundreds of emails in a row and we want to just be able to think, hey, call Tony up and ask him and then all of a sudden your phone calls without necessarily having to blab to Alexa because you'll be talking to your computer which takes your dictation. Um, and one other thing, right, if you, this all actually starts with monitoring brainwaves, right, in which case you can also check in on well-being of soldiers um, in, in a sense, although I could also understand why some people wouldn't like it. So talk to us about sort of the squad monitoring, the squad health monitoring that you can also do with this, um, given that you will be able to read brain uh, brainwaves and pattern uh, patterns uh, as, as well, right? So talk to us about both, you know, the positive aspects of it and the potentially maybe less positive aspects or, 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 or an issue that has to be addressed, let's say. Sure, so let, let's, let's do the issue first. So um, like it or not, being able to know the welfare and well-being of guys on the ground is important, not just for our military community, but environments like blue light emergency services where people want to know the well-being of their, their, their people. You have the duty of care. Uh, so being able to know whether someone is stressed or someone is engaged, someone's on task or ready to do the job in hand uh, is important at the command level. Um, traditionally that's done by uh, physiological monitoring, so we'll measure things like heart rate, 
uh, oxygen level, body temperature, and then try and, and imply if someone's healthy or would fit to do the job. Here we're measuring brain waves, and out of those brain waves, we get a direct read of things like stress and engagement and tiredness, their overall well being. And that allows us to uh, directly say this person's good on task or this person isn't. Now, we talked about those training techniques that we imply for. Uh, controlling we can apply those same techniques to reduce stress so the same techniques we teach you about this is how you go about controlling things are, are the same techniques we can give you to say you're stressed here's a technique to be less stressed you're not engaged here's a technique to be more engaged and and there's a lot of neurological work going on we're working with a specialist to help us put that in place so the solution isn't just here's a box and here's a gadget here's some training and that kind of side piece to help us uh, engage with the well-being community not only to say here are people and they're not good what are you going to do about it but here are people they're not good and here are some techniques to help them be good again and that's something that's very powerful and something that I think will come first so although control is the interesting and more uh, uh, dynamic end of the problem space I think actually what we're seeing is the well-being and monitoring of someone's health uh, and how engaged they are maybe how stressed they are is actually the piece that's going to come first the problem that's going to be solved first using this technology. Tony thanks very much it's an absolute pleasure always talking to you. Uh, Tony White Chief Technology Officer uh, at Ultra Electronics and the Land Systems Division absolutely brilliant I wish you best of luck on the pro uh, product uh, and uh, look forward to having a, a cider with you uh, uh, north of Bath one of these days. You bet. Please come and see us. Thank you so much.